and welcome to this episode of Round Robin. I'm Robin McCormick, Communications and Marketing Director for Hampton, and today my guest is Weston Young. Weston is our stormwater engineer, and he's going to talk about Chesapeake Bay and cleanup and what the city is doing, and a little bit about what you can do to help. Welcome, Weston. Glad to have you here. Hi, thank you. Tell me what the diet is and and why we're doing it yes the pollution diet is basically an initiative uh, President Obama uh, has enacted that is part of the Clean Water Act is part of cleaning the Chesapeake Bay of various nutrients the nutrients in question are uh, nitrogen phosphorus and sediment well now wait stop right there because nitrogen and phosphorus are normal and natural and already exist in the bay why are they a problem yes that that is correct um, however while there are natural levels of, of those nutrients uh, through man-made practices from agriculture to uh, urban development uh, increases in excess of nitrogen and phosphorus and sediment uh, have gotten into the bay and uh, they, they cause problems. Um, some of the problems, um, nitrogen and phosphorus, what we spread on our lawns, is, uh, contributes to algae growth. And algae growth combined with sediment help block the sunlight that's trying to filter down to the uh, vegetation and it kind of chokes the vegetation. Uh, also when algae dies, uh, the microorganisms that eat it pull oxygen out of the water. Oxygen is needed for fish and shellfish to, to survive, so there's another uh, impairing our, our ability to keep both vegetation and uh, aquatic animals and, and the like uh, healthy. Okay, so it hurts our environment and it also, frankly, hurts the economy if you're choking off fish and shellfish and a lot of the seafood that our region depends on. Exactly. Uh, I know watermen take a, a large hit when they, they cannot pull um, the, the numbers of fish or shellfish or, or whatever they're harvesting out of the water, as well as um, who wants to uh, wakeboard or water ski when, when the water is green or has, has a bunch of vegetation where you can't see, see okay. the bottom. So there's, there's a lot of impacts due to this pollution. So this is, this is a new specific measure, but this is part of the, as long as I've lived here, more than 25 year effort to really clean up the Chesapeake Bay. Yes, that is correct. Um, in the past, the efforts have been voluntary. And while ah. there has been measurable progress, it is still far from where it needs to be to be considered a non-impaired healthy waterway. And um, President Obama views, uh, and he even did through an executive order, um, the Chesapeake Bay as a national treasure. So they've, uh, the federal and state governments have, have uh, gone, gone after this with full gusto. So what do we as a city have to do to um, meet these new goals or mandates or whatever it is we, we should be calling them? Yes, currently to address the pollution diet, uh, the city, uh, all local municipalities, uh, in Virginia there's 96 localities, uh, are having to tell the state how we intend to clean up the bay, how we intend to reduce uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. Uh, some of our suggestions include uh, installing basic stormwater practices such as the ponds you see in your neighborhood mm -hmm. or um, uh, other options such as removing impervious area. Um, now tell me what impervious means. Uh, impervious is, an example of impervious is rooftops, driveways, parking lots, um, areas that used to be vegetated that uh, we have paved over, paved over. Okay. and the rainfall that used to fall down and infiltrate through the soil uh, can no longer do that. And stormwater management typically involves collecting the excess rainwater that is now running off the parking lot, typically to an inlet um, or, or a ditch or, or um, something that captures the stormwater and pushes it off site. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> So what we're looking for, I mean, part of the solution then is so the heavy rains don't run straight from my roof to my driveway to my street to actually mine, mine drains right into a creek in my neighborhood. There's, mm -hmm. there's, I don't think there's um, stormwater collection in my neighborhood. So, so how can we as a city 
change, I mean, we're a almost fully developed city. We're pretty well paved where, where mm -hmm. it's going to be paved. Are we going to have to make changes to what's already there? Or will this affect new development or both? Um, ideally, uh, we, we want to limit the impacts that new development, development has to go through to build in the city. Um, what, what we're looking at through Public Works is that with each of our capital improvement projects or, or public infrastructure that we have a water quality element involved so that if we have a parking lot it uses permeable pavers which are a alternative to say asphalt um, to where water can still infiltrate down and you can park vehicles on top of it mm -hmm. without compacting uh, the soil. Um, so with that we're, we're hoping to minimize uh, what what development has to go through now to, to meet this. Um, also some things in the work is a nutrient trading option or which is a complex thing but basically it, it tends to be cheaper for agriculture uh, upstream of say where our development is to to remove nutrients than it is say downtown Hampton where we're all built out mm -hmm. and we we don't have room for a big detention uh, or a uh, stormwater pond um, so there, there will be some hopefully several options that developers can pursue to get nutrient uh, reductions uh, for their site while not maybe having to do them directly at the site itself. Gotcha, so this really affects places that don't border on the Chesapeake Bay but have rivers and streams that eventually those waters end up. Yes, um, this, whole, this whole measure isn't just Hampton or isn't just Virginia, it includes uh, six states and the District of Columbia. Uh, it's a 64,000 square mile watershed. Uh, so it's a huge area and what's happening in Richmond works its way down this way or what's happening in parts of West Virginia or New York or Pennsylvania come to the bay. So it's something that um, there are options that if they make corrective measures up there in conjunction with the corrective measures we make that we'll have cleaner waterways through the whole bay watershed. Okay. And what are some other things the city um, already is doing or will be doing? I know street sweeping is a part of this. Yes, there, there are many things that, that the city's doing already, and uh, it's all about getting credit for it. Uh, street sweeping is, is a great uh, option. It removes sediment and vegetation. Um, dead leaves contribute nutrients to, to the waterways as well. Um, so by street sweeping, we are pulling that out and keeping it out of our stormwater system. Um, also our standard maintenance of cleaning out the ditches or cleaning out the storm drains helps with reducing flooding that, that nobody wants, but at the same time right. it pulls nutrients that are on their way to, the, to our waterways out. out. Um, we're also uh, going to the private um, stormwater structures and making sure they're maintained properly and we'll be um, sending letters out to the owners of those and say, hey, you need to do this or make these minor changes to uh, make sure their, their structures are working appropriately. Okay. And you said something also about, uh, and I know there are a lot of neighborhoods who've been on a list for, you know, even up to 20 years asking for curb and guttering, but traditional curb and guttering is not looked on as favorable in, in this environment. Yes, there's a lot of uh, things that help and hinder. And with the impervious area, taking a roadway that currently has ditches, those ditches, uh, while sometimes filled with water, depending on, on your location, uh, they allow the water to infiltrate or the sediment to drop down into that ditch, which later gets cleaned out by our, our operations crew. Um, by putting traditional curb and gutter, we are adding to the impervious and basically pushing the water quality problems downstream to somebody else. Because they're landing um, on asphalt and flowing instead of yes. being absorbed slowly over time into the, into the ground. Yes, now what, what I would like to say is that this, that doesn't mean that if you have uh, ditches currently that you won't get curb and gutter. There, it, isn't, it isn't a black and white issue. It is, um, there are options known as, I guess, greenscapes or, or um, kind of green alternatives to where the water, while it'll flow off the roadway, it'll then drain to an area that's like a rain garden or vegetation and it'll allow it to infiltrate, let the plants that are planted in there absorb it and use it. 
and in the in the larger rain events there'll be overflow structures so that um, you won't get flooding in the area if the vegetation soils can't. Uh, can't handle it it'll then go through and then it'll be piped so really for the smaller uh, rainstorms they won't leave this leave the area whereas mm -hmm. if if we have a um, massive nor'easter or hurricane type weather it will be able to get out of the system without uh, while minimizing flooding okay and we have i think some photos of some of these um, which we're i hope we'll be able to show during this and it yes. it's really um it almost looks like curb and gutter when i first looked at the photos i thought well how is this different yes but yeah in, in some cases what what you'll do is instead of having a vertical curb um it'll it'll be a flat curb and it'll drain to uh say small rocks and then vegetation and uh, so water will go right off the road and start getting absorbed. Mm -hmm. Other options are we, we still put the curb in, but along the curb we cut sections out where the water can then drain back and then where the sidewalk and little green green spots are, we can plant vegetation and kind of let the water go there before it, rather than go directly to an inlet and get pushed out of into our pipe system and, and directly into our waterways. All right, now how do we know whether or not these measures are working and, and how do we get credits with the federal government for, for what we're doing? Um, right now, the federal government uh, has published guidelines that putting in this measure reduces or has been shown to reduce, um, I guess, the various nutrients uh, and sediment. Uh, the federal and state governments have monitoring stations throughout the bay and they'll be able to see as we go along whether or not the watershed uh, specifically uh, is, is improving and with the measures we're, we're putting it, it should improve. Um, right now uh, it's all about looking good on paper. Uh, right, because really the, the federal government isn't going to be able to tell whether it was our measure or Langley Air Force Base, you know, federal installation measure or a farmer in Lynchburg who, whose runoff eventually comes this way. Exactly. It's, uh, it's something that they'll say that the water's still impaired. Uh, how, how are we going to go about doing it? And if we can show good faith efforts and that we have put the various items in place that have been shown through studies and research that they, they are effective, um, they'll, they'll look past us and look after the people who say, well, we, we haven't done it or, or we, we're not going to do it, I guess. Okay, so they're also giving us guidance on what works and, and how we should go about this process. That is correct. Um, now I know. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say the um, there are some measures that we are we are looking at that you know it's hard to say what works in Pennsylvania will work in coastal Virginia. Right. Um, so we are trying to get some specific uh, measures approved, such as uh, adding adding oyster reefs uh, to to our waterways or. Uh, where we do dredging, we're pulling sediment out of the, the waterways, so why can't we get credit for that? Right, that is a corrective measure. It is going to help, yes. but it isn't on the approved list yet, right? Not, not currently. And as, as a region, uh, the, the regional municipalities uh, are working together, and we're pushing some of those initiatives. There's a lot of good stuff that we're doing now that we just want to get credit for. Right, and oysters are one of those things where you think, well, you're just growing seafood, but you're not. They actually help filter and clean the waters, right? Yes, yeah, so that is correct. Uh, uh, adult oyster, I want to say three inches, um, will filter over 50 gallons of water a day. That's amazing. So it's, it's, a, it's a natural filter, and the measures we are proposing will uh, help clean up the water so that oysters, uh, as I mentioned with uh, blocking the sunlight and increasing the sediment, mm -hmm. um, help, uh, it'll help them survive and grow and ideally thrive. Right, okay. Now, mostly what you work on is big city initiatives. Are there things that I, as a homeowner, can do in my house or my yard to help this effort of reducing runoff and helping clean up the bay? Definitely, definitely. One of the first things is we, we, with the lawns and wanting to fertilize the lawns, one of the best things you can do is get a soil test. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. It'll tell you how much fertilizer you need to, to uh, get to, for your grass. And so you, you put the bare minimum, and if you put more than what your, your lawn needs, it just gets washed off into the bay. Mm -hmm. um, other, other initiatives you can do is pick up after your pets. 
um, that, that reduces nutrients and it also reduces uh, bacterial contamination of our waterways. Um, and if you have waterfront property, look at growing, growing oysters. There's a lot of great references uh, uh, in the area that'll say this is how you can grow your own oysters. And if, you're, if your waters are currently impaired, you can, they still improve water quality. You may not be able to eat them, but it, it helps out. So there, there's right. a lot of great things and, uh, that, that homeowners can do to improve things. Okay, um, I think we're about to wrap up. Is there anything else I have forgotten to ask you or that you wanted to add? No, um, I, I don't mind handling uh, any questions or, or uh, if somebody has, has yeah, additional questions regarding this or other stormwater matters, uh, they're welcome to email me, uh, wyoung at hampton.gov. Okay, and a phone call, the best way to reach you really is the city's 311 communication system and they'll funnel the request to you or to, to whoever in the city should help. Yes, if you see anything that, that seems out of whack with, with stormwater related things, dial 311. It's, uh, it'll come to me and our operations guys and, and we get on it right away because we want to clean up the bay and nipping things in the bud is the way to go. Okay, well thank you Weston. I appreciate you coming by today. Hey, thank you. And thank you for watching this episode of Round Robin. I hope you'll join us the next time.